A few weeks ago, sitting by my campfire at my house in the front yard, had a stack of journals out. I was tearing off pages, throwing them in the fire. Felt pretty good. Just sitting by the campfire by myself, burning journals. You ever felt like burning your journals? Whether you journal or not, have you ever felt like just burning your journals? There was a reason I was burning my journals that evening. And as I was flipping through years of journals, I came to October, the same time now, but 16 years ago. Is that right? 2008, and I saw a list of names, and I didn't recognize some names, some I recognized that were in my life and gone, and I saw a name I was familiar with, I saw Travis Murray, I saw your name, and I realized, oh, this is a list of roommates, and I was at I was at an event, I was at a retreat, a spiritual retreat, and for some reason I had decided to document who was with me that weekend. And as I looked at the rest of the page, I was trying to observe what, what, was, what was I saying, what did I recorded here for that day or that weekend in October of 2008. And, and then I began to realize, oh, oh I, I, this is coming back to my, my mind. This is coming back to memory from 16 years ago. I have to kind of reflect and see what was happening. And then I, I wanted to flip the page back and see, well, what was leading up to me choosing to do this? And then I wanted to flip a page forward and say, well, what happened after I chose to do that? And then I thought, God, why, why am I slowing down? Why am I pausing? I was really enjoying burning these pages. I was really enjoying seeing these journals go up in flames. But you stopped me. And God, what do you want to say to me based on what I'm seeing right now? Are you wanting to, to show me something new or remind me of something old? What's the application and what I just did was, I, I just gave you a tool of how do you study the scriptures? How do, you, how do you study by just opening your Bible? When we study, when we study God, when we want to know more about Him, when we want to have something revealed about the heart of the Father, and we get into observing what the text says, and then, then we start interpreting what is going on here, and then we apply it to our lives, you've simply moved into one of the easiest ways to study God's Word. It's also a way to study yourself. Both are very important. So I'm observing, I'm interpreting, and I'm applying. And in that moment by the campfire, I had a holy moment. God wanted to remind me of something. He wanted to show me something. And he wanted me to apply that to my life. O-I-A. Observe, interpret, apply. It's kind of catchy. O-I-A, O-I-A, O-I-A. It's a good tool for you to use. Kind of reminds me of if you've been to a, a soccer match, a professional soccer match, and they've got this chant that they say, and, and, or they sing it, they chant it in the games. It's ole, 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 ole. You can remember that. You, you, can, you can grab a hold of that. Come on, try it. Let's hear it. I think it's going to play. Maybe not. Oh, away, away, away. Now 
now you got it. You got it. See, it's going to help you. Every time you attach something to music, it sticks with you. You know the lyrics from those 80s songs. There's something about the mind capturing through music something that gets down in your spirit. So I, I want you to get that down in your spirit as you study God's word, you, you observe what the text says, and then you interpret, you look at the context, you, you try to understand some of the words that are challenging you, and then you apply it to your life. You can also do that with yourself. Observe wh what's going on in your life right now. Sometimes you need somebody else to tell you what's going on in your life right now. And then, then try to understand deeper. Why are you behaving this way? What's, what's the interpretation? What's the root of my response right now in this season? And God, what would you want to apply to my life? What could I learn in application to be more like Jesus? How, how could Holy Spirit reveal to me how I could be better? That's an observation and then an interpretation and then an application that will serve you well. Study is the spiritual discipline that we're looking at today as we move through towards the end of this series called The Long Walk. Do you have what you need? One of the tools you need is to be able to study. And I bet when I say study, you're probably thinking, I'm done with school, some of you. I, I don't want to read anymore. I don't want to open any more books. Study. Uh, this is going to be boring. I'm not talking about that. Let's, let's look at study in the Scripture and see if we can understand a little bit better about this word study. And we can use the OIA technique in 2 Timothy 2.15, a verse you may be familiar with, 2 Timothy 2.15. I want you to see it in the Amplified Bible. Study and do your best to present yourself to God approved. A workman tested by trial who has no reason to be ashamed, accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. Approved workmen are not ashamed. Study. Does this mean I've got to, I, if, if I read more of the scripture, if I read more Christian books, then, then God will approve of me more. Oh, it's the Quite the contrary of that. If we look at the, if we, if we use the tool observe, interpret, and apply, and we observe this text, and, and we see that this is Paul teaching Timothy some important things before Paul's imp, in, impending death, he's saying, young Timothy, study, but, but realize that the New Testament originally is, is in Greek, and so if we look at the Greek word for study, it's spadazo. Spadazo. Spadazo means to exert oneself or endeavor. To endeavor into, to press in. We like to use that phrase, press in. It means to, to eagerly go after. Does it say anything about reading books? Study, endeavor, lean into this. And if we look at the word approved, we want to study to be approved. Approved in the Greek, the word is dokimos, if I'm saying that right. Dokimos, and that means considered good or judged worthy. So if you're approved, you're considered good. You've passed the, the test. You're, you're judged worthy. And so if you interpret, if you move from the observation into the interpretation you might say, well, this verse means if we read and study the scriptures well, God approves us. But if we understand those Greek words and we look a little deeper at this particular verse, this, this text, I think more correctly it could be interpreted as, as this. Can you show that definition that I think is important for us to know? I'll read it to you. <laughs> Through our endeavoring to know the truth, we prove to ourselves that we have been approved by God through the work of Jesus Christ. Now, that's a little fresh. 
But that, that's a little deeper. That's, that's observing, interpreting. We haven't got to the application yet. But, but if we look deep at what Paul is trying to say to Timothy, he's saying, press in to know the truth. Uh, eagerly work for knowing what God says, knowing who God is. And then it will prove to ourselves that we have been approved, we have been judged worthy, we are good because God says so. We are good because of our faith in Jesus Christ. He sees us as good and approved, tested and judged worthy through Jesus Christ. That's a little richer, a little deeper. It doesn't mean study the Bible and God will love you more. It means Study to know God's heart, and you will see that he approves you. That's the truth. He loves you. He accepts you. He's, he receives you as his own through Jesus Christ, his son, who died for you. Oh, man. I, I, now, that's, that's a good word for the church. It's a good word for us after I've gone a little deeper and interpreted. Now, what's the application Studying doesn't make us more approved by God, nor does our lack of study make us less approved. But if we do study, if we do endeavor to know God and know him through his word, then it will become even more apparent how approved we are in his eyes and how much he loves us. But the less you endeavor to study, the less you press in to know the heart of the Father, the less it will be apparent to you. Okay, so, so I commend you, I encourage you for, for being here, gathering today, hearing God's word. You're, you're becoming more aware of his love for him when you worship together, when you hear his word preached, when his word is taught. You are becoming more of a, aware of his acceptance of you through Jesus. No work of yours, but the work of his on the cross is what gives your acceptance in God's eyes. But the less you're, you're together like this, the less you're, you're discipled, the less you're in his word, the less you worship, the less you become aware of it. And that's a long, lonely walk. This long walk deserves for you to spend some time studying, endeavoring to know him, so that the further you walk in life, the more filled with joy you are because you know God the Father loves you so much because you've surrendered your life to Jesus. And his sacrifice was so worth it because God sees you through the love of his son. That, that makes a long walk not so long. That makes a long walk not so lonely. That makes a long walk good. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen? amen. I love it. I love that I can see something and you can see something with me that, that encourages a life that's victorious, a long walk that's good and not heavy and burdensome and, and full of pitfalls. That the longer we go on a long walk and we study and we endeavor to know him, the better the journey is. That sounds like a win. That sounds like living victoriously. Now you got it. That was right on cue. Love it. Ole, 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 ole. Come on. Oh. Some of you are full of joy this morning. Some of you. Oh, it's an extended worship. <laughs> I love it. OIA. That's going to get down in your spirit this week. I just know you're going to be singing that as you drive to work tomorrow. <laughs> so we studied that, that verse about study. Let's look at a passage. Let's look, let's look at a parable that Jesus teaches, a parable of the two sons. We can pick that up in Matthew 21, verses 28 through 32. Matthew 21. 28 through 32, parable of the two sons. Jesus said, what do you think? A man had two sons, and he went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward, he changed his mind and went. And he went to the other son and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir, 
but did not go? Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I say to you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even when you saw it, you did not afterward change your minds and believe him. Now, let's try to study this. Let's, let's apply the OIA to this parable that Jesus is, is teaching. And if we observe the text, we look at it in context, we see that, that Jesus' authority is being challenged. He's in the temple in Jerusalem, surrounded by the religious, surrounded by the Pharisees, and they're questioning his authority, and they're, they're fully in their religiosity. And, and Jesus tells this story that's a, it's a metaphor to, to illustrate what he wants them to know. You might even read it in a few translations to observe this text. And then if we interpret, we realize that as Jesus is illustrating, he says to those Pharisees, to to the religious leaders, he says, tax collectors and prostitutes go into the kingdom of heaven. He's saying before you guys. Now, why would he choose tax collectors and prostitutes? In the eyes of the religious, that's two despised groups. Tax collectors and prostitutes. How how do we, when we're looking for acceptance, approval, how often do we find it in our humanity, in our flesh? It's often through money or sex. It's often through relationships that are not authentic or the love of money. You can't love God and love money too. You can't love someone and just sell your body. You you see, Jesus is saying, these are those that you say are despised. But I say they are loved. Jesus says they will enter the kingdom of heaven Because they heard what John was preaching. They heard that if they repent and turn from their ways and follow Jesus, they will enter the kingdom of God and live for eternity and live fully abundant now with a new life forgiven of their sins, transformed, a kingdom that the the Pharisees couldn't comprehend. This is not the Messiah they're looking for. And Jesus illustrates through this parable and says, you even saw it yourself that that these particular people that you despise, they accepted the good news, they changed their minds, and now you see they have a changed life. They're different. They're transformed. They truly believe. They are forgiven. And yet you turn your nose up at them. You can't accept this good news. You can't accept this wonderful gospel that this could be true, that it has to be about following rules, and they weren't up to snuff. And so in that interpretation, we see see the, the Father's acceptance through Jesus. After we see in the context that Jesus is in the temple, he is the King of kings in the temple, and trying to convey a truth to those that won't believe, but not really trying to get them to believe. He knows they've they've been given up to the devil. He knows that that they have hardened their heart. But that's encouragement probably for those that, that were bystanders, that weren't directly being spoken to, to say, yeah, that's right. Jesus forgave us. He set us free. And then if we apply, if we move from observation to interpretation to application, what about this for my life? What does this parable of the two sons have to do with me? What is it speaking to you? Even now, what is Holy Spirit showing you? 
And as I read it in the context of what I'm sharing with you today, I'm seeing, well, here's people looking for approval. And the approval that Jesus is speaking out against is those that are looking for approval amongst men. If I follow this, if I wear this, if I do this, then I am approved, accepted, I'm in. Because my fellow posse here accepts me. But the application is, it don't matter what you do. It doesn't matter your works. It doesn't matter what you try to do to say, God, will you love me now? The application for me is, I don't, I don't need to let the voice of men trump the voice of God. Amen. You don't need to let men drive your plans and your destiny when God has a plan for you. So many of you know that God has a purpose for you, but it seems wild, it seems impossible, and so you listen to the counsel of men, so it's practical, and you miss your destiny. The application, maybe it's for you too, is for you not to be led and approved and accepted by men and women when God is shouting, I love you. I accept you just as you are. I made you that way. I want you to follow me. I've got a higher calling than what they're telling you to do. You're going you're gonna to settle for lesser if you listen to them. You're never going to be free of this bondage of seeking approval by other people if you don't break free from those voices and step out and follow me. That is good news. You can talk back. You can talk back to me. That is good news. Because I have struggled with that. I have struggled with that very thing. And so I find that is, as we discover the spiritual discipline of study, and we actually learn a little bit more what study means, it doesn't mean, oh man, if I can get a doctorate in divinity, then God will love me more and my church will follow me even closer, and this will be a greater house of God. If I would just study more, if I would pour over these scriptures then we would do greater things. And I would be considered greater in the kingdom. Oh man, that is the enemy. That is such a lie from hell. You have your own lies from hell that you're listening to. That you have been brought up, you have been raised, you have been trained, you have been indoctrinated to do the thing that man would say to do. It's a lesser thing. What God would have you do is a greater thing. And sometimes God calls you to do a thing that's less visible. Hear me in that. That wasn't in my notes. God calls you sometimes to greater things that are less seen. We are in a world that has so much comparison so much noise of trying to be approved, seen, known, appreciated. It's not loved. You're, we're finding value in people needing us. When people need the Lord. And if, if I find value that people need me, that's so dysfunctional. But then I, I will fall into it and let it feed me. Do you see that? Who, who loves to help people out? And then who says yes so many times that if you don't put on the brakes, you don't see that, oh, I'm finding my identity in this. God's calling me as a servant, but not to the sacrifice of myself. 
You see, some of you are there. Some of you are great servants, and you've had a chance in the last month to really love our community in sacrificial ways. But if you cross the line of finding your value in that, and it starts to, to begin to consume you. If you drop one thing or drop one person or can't get to everybody, then you've, you've not, you're actually not yourself. You're definitely not who God called you to be. You're becoming who people are asking you to be. And, and that is never a fulfillment that will last. It's never enough to where you can say, ah, oh, enough people love me. I'm good. Enough people are pleased with me. You'll never please everybody. We can see the example of the Israelites. They were never happy. Once they got freed from Egypt, they still kept complaining. God kept sending them water, manna, quail. It don't matter. We're still complaining. If God can't please them, you can't please them. Who do you think you are? I hate people pleasing. And I've lived a lot of years in that world as a people pleaser. And I had to realize my soul was getting eaten away. Who am I anymore? I'm just whoever somebody wants me to be. And if you can't be you, then what, what, what good are you? You can't, you can't give the gifts of God in you to someone else when you start to become whoever they want you to be. You've been manipulated. You see, we started talking about study, but I'm saying study yourself. This is, this is what was happening to me at, the, at the, my little fireside moment. I was studying myself. And Galatians 1.10 shouts at me. It may shout at you as, as Paul writes to Galatia, for I am now seeking the approval of man or of God. Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Who would I be? A servant of you. Now, it's good to serve people. You don't hear me wrong. But I'm saying, as you serve people, serve in the name of Christ. Selfless, not looking for anything in reciprocity, not looking for an amen or a pat on the back. Not looking for one more person to ask for your help because it's feeding your identity. Being a servant of Christ has nothing to do with that sort of thing. And so Paul speaks to the church. Are you serving man or are you serving God? Are you a servant of Christ or those that are pulling on you, draining you to the point of you have nothing left of yourself? Now, We've been talking about serving a community for weeks, and I've been, I've been imploring you to serve in the name of the Lord Jesus and to be generous. And so this may seem like a backtrack. It's not a backtrack. This is the truth of God keeping you healthy, giving you boundaries, and giving you instruction for you being a servant of Christ in the best of ways. So we've got to be careful we, we can overextend, pull back, and remember, we have to rest. We have to take care of ourselves. We have to be healthy and whole. And we have to also have the space to listen to what God's telling us or asking of us. We can be so busy helping everybody else, and God's saying, hey, I'm calling you over here. But Lord, I'm busy doing a work in here. Who even are you? <laughs> I'm whoever this person wants me to be today. Get your head up. Pull up. Pull out. Back up. You're losing yourself. It's just a balance. This is what the Lord was saying to me, and I believe he's saying to us, that in your study and you're endeavoring to know God's heart, Know that he accepts you whether you do one more thing. He not only accepts you, he approves of you whether you did something that made an excellent mark or got a gold star. And even better than that, he loves you. Loves you to the point that you are called his child. 
You are his son and daughter. You inherit the kingdom that he has prepared for you one day in heaven and now on earth. That's good news. And that's what happens when we study in the right way. So when I'm at that fire and, and I'm, I'm tearing these pages out of my journal and you're wondering, why is he doing that? Why, why, did he, why was he compelled? Why, why did he, by himself, put 16 years worth of journals <laughs> by him in this campfire and burn page by page by page? Well, I'll tell you why. Because I am an overcomer of people pleasing. I have been delivered of the approval of man. But anything you've overcome or been delivered of can rise back up when a, when a trigger happens, when a situation changes, when, when your environment shifts, when somebody different comes in your life. It can rise back up and you can say, but God, or you can let it rise back up and it's like, but me. You see what I'm saying? And I had a moment that I wasn't strong enough. I was tired. I had given out, poured out. And I didn't say, but God, and step back on that thing that was rising up. And I just let it hit me. And it was in, a, it was in about a one-hour scroll through this thing called Facebook that I got off of years ago because of this. But somebody said, Pastor, you need to see what's going on. You need to see this story. You need to see what they're doing. You need to see what this is ha what's happening in this thing. Jump back on that Facebook just for a moment and check that one thing out. I can't check that one thing out. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. And I'm seeing. And I'm comparing. I'm like, oh, I should be doing this. And I should be doing that. And oh, man, why didn't I think of that? And they're, they're amazing. And they're doing that. And, and I... I I'm a terrible leader, and I'm a terrible pastor, and I'm a terrible husband, I'm a terrible father. Look at all these great things these people are doing. And I'm looking at a journal of highlights. I'm not seeing their low lights. But if I get inundated with every great thing that people want to show off, it triggered me. It triggered me so much that I had an anxiety attack. And that day, I, I got up from that after I realized how much, you know how much time goes by and you're just like, zzz, 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 and you're like, you think it's five minutes, it's 50 minutes. It is so demonic. I'm just calling it out. And when I threw that iPad down and got up, my blood pressure was so high, I could hardly walk out of the house. I was literally dizzy and about to faint. Anxiety had come over me so much. I hate being transparent with you guys. No, I don't like that word hate, but it's uncomfortable, but I do it just to be real with you guys and help you because I'm probably not the only one. We've been there, but we don't need to stay there. And I was embarrassed, ashamed that that kind of anxiety would come over your pastor as I compared and as I, as I looked to see how much they were approved of through all their likes and shares. They're so much more approved than me. Oh God, what do I got to do to make it up to you? Isn't that foolish? Did you hear what I just said? Oh God, what do I got to do to make it up to you so I can be as, as worthy as these others I'm seeing? How foolish. But that's so much in the natural. That's just me in the flesh. But I, I, I was going through this exercise of, of tearing these out, and I'm reminded that 
1 Corinthians 2.14 says, The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. And I began to study myself, and I began to say, Holy Spirit, you know me better than anyone. I could ask a friend. I could ask my, my wife. I could even ask myself, but are they going to be 100% honest? <laughs> Holy Spirit, you'll be truthful with me, and I'm ready to receive it. What do I need to know as I study myself? I'm studying your word. I'm hearing your promises, but I see the weakness in myself. I see a lie that I'm believing. And so Holy Spirit says, you know all them journals in your closet that take up your whole top shelf? You need to burn those things. It's like, Wow, that's lots of good memories. That's lots of, of uh, history. It's lots of me. Ooh. There it is. There it is. That's that Holy Spirit moment. So, yeah, that's a lot of you. And a lot of you has got a lot of names. And a lot of names are names of people that aren't in your life anymore. A lot of, a lot of events in your life that gave you value and identity that, that said, this is you. And then you look 16 years later, and I'm like, I don't even know these people. Where are they at? They're not in my life. Where even was I? But as I looked at them, it was almost like the scroll. I started seeing names, and I was like, oh, they, they rejected me. They abandoned me. They're not in my life anymore. I failed them. I let them down. I couldn't please them enough, and they left. You hear that foolish talk? That's why Holy Spirit said, burn them. Burn it. You're thinking wrongly. You're believing lies. The truth is, who gets in your life are people that I send in your life, and the ones you're meant to keep, you will keep, and the ones that are meant to go, they need to go. You have people that you might think you've lost, but God might have been protecting you from something. You have people like, I'm like, Travis Murray still in my life 16 years later. Hallelujah, amen. <laughs> that was a Travis Murray that didn't know Jenny Watson. You guys hadn't even met. You were coming from a hard place, a hard time. And I don't know all that, that weekend, the fruit that produced for you. But I, I knew, <laughs> I, met, I met a dude that, was just looking for some freedom and I was too and so when I looked at my journal and saw I was just trying to break free I'd had enough I knew the Lord but I hadn't encountered the Holy Spirit Travis knew the Lord but he hadn't encountered Jenny Watson <laughs> maybe close I don't <laughs> I mean it was probably good to encounter her but it was really good to encounter the Holy Spirit but Holy Spirit had to, he waited till I emptied myself of some junk before he filled me. And then 16 years later, as your pastor, I'm saying, I still got junk. But when I burnt those journals, you know what was left? Ha, that's all that was left. <laughs> that's this, this uh, wire spiral binding. I got 16 of these babies. <laughs> but, but you know what that says to me? This is a binding. This is a binding. And if I, if Holy Spirit was saying, you know all those names, all those people, all those seasons that you got so much identity in that were attached to this, and now I'm setting you free. Burn, burn, burn. Otherwise, I was going into a spiral. And he says, be free. Burn all that. And I'm not, I'm not saying burn all your relationships. I'm just saying this is what God had me do. So I would see a truth because I wanted to endeavor into what God's heart was. And I wanted to understand I'm approved. I'm accepted. I'm loved. 2 Timothy 2.15. It came to life. 
by that campfire. And now this is my testimony. Free. Free. You know, uh, it felt good burning those pages. Some of you got some pages to burn. And, and God can't burn what you don't put on the altar. That took, I, I didn't really want to share all that with you. But I'm giving glory to God because I was willing to see that weakness in me and put that on the altar and say, God, burn that up. That's not your best for me. That's a lie I'm believing, and I don't want to live that anymore. Would you stand with me? I love a good fire. I love a good Holy Ghost fire. I love it when he burns up the things that are holding us back, the things that aren't meant for us, the lies that we've been believing. If you've been living a life that's so subject to the approval of others, you're not living your best life. You're not living the life that God has for you. I've been there, done that. I've been set free, but I had to get set free again. He will bring things back to you. You'll be tested, but then you'll be approved if you listen to his voice over others. This is the beauty of study. If our prayer teams could come up at this point, I believe there's some ministry to be had. And as they're coming, I want to extend an invitation to you to be set free in Jesus. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you haven't been set free from the approval of man and just walked into the loving arms of God, maybe today is the day to start your journey of freedom. You don't have to burn journals. You just have to say, God, I give my life to you. I'm tired of living for people. I want to live for you. I repent of my sin. I turn and, and want to walk the other way. I want to walk in your arms, the arms that see me as loved and accepted and free from the burden of people pleasing and free to know that you see me fully loved, fully accepted forever. Amen. That could be your decision today. Maybe that's the campfire you need to warm up to today. If you made that decision today to be set free from those bindings, I encourage you to come up and share that with one of the prayer teams today so they can pray with you and you can just seal this moment in the spirit. It's important to know the day you've been reborn. But if you're a born again believer and you still struggle with approval and acceptance, I encourage you to let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Maybe it's a mother wound. Maybe it's a father wound. Maybe it's a boss at work. God, I pray for my family, my church family right now, God. I pray that as you have set me free, and then as I have fallen back, you picked me back up, I pray that, God, you would, you would remind someone today that's been so subject to the approval of man, they've not been themselves. God, set them free. Tear those pages out. God, let them see that the approval of you is sufficient. Your son on the cross was sufficient. Your love is the only fulfillment, not the love of man. The love of you is the ultimate satisfaction, the ultimate fulfillment. God, remind your saints today not to be slaves of people's approval but to be free in Christ and know that you love them and you accept them and you receive them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord.